right, class, we're starting a three-part series on neonatology. Uh, and neonates a little bit different from our, our standard patient, and I'm going to go over those little differences and, and our management and, and treatment of these guys because it is a little bit different. It is a very special population of patients that we have to deal with. And we're talking about 0 to 28 days is what we're talking about. Uh, one, mo one month is a good one, but uh, again, zero to, the law actually reads 0 to 28 days, and there, I'll, I'll bring that up a, a little bit more importantly as we get a little bit more into this, of uh, why that's important. Um, again, if, if they're fresh out of the, out of the, the womb, they are, they are known as newborns, okay? So again, these are recently born in the first few hours of life, uh, I guess say within four hours, they, we would consider them a newborn. And then if you have an unscheduled delivery in the field, just remember now, now we don't have one report to write. We got two reports because baby came into the world is the second report. Okay. So, and I want to bring up, notice this guy is just a little bit off color on the, on the feet and a little bit around the umbilicus. Um, the, the baby's getting used to actually breathing on their own and, and, and taking in oxygen via their lungs. They haven't had that. And hopefully you guys have already seen the video on the changes in fetal circulation. So if you have not seen that already, go back and, and watch that now. Stop it here, go back, watch that video, okay? Because there's some important things that happen with these guys when they come out of the womb and they take that first breath. A lot of changes happen really quick, okay? They switch over from the umbilical system over to their systems, and again, changes occur, all right? Um, and by the way, um, Guys, uh, the, the management of them is a little bit different as far as the pattern, but it's still ABCs, okay? And 98% of all newborns do not require any resuscitation other than maybe just a little bit of suctioning, a little bit of stimulation, okay? Keep them warm, all right? If it's hot for you, it's about right for the baby. Remember, baby's been in 98.6 for the last, oh, nine months, and... So when the baby comes out, it is thermoregulations a little bit. They get quick, they get cold quick. So you want it baking hot in the back of that truck, turn the heat on. I don't care how hot it is outside. If you're not leaving the back of that ambulance poor and sweat, it was probably too cold for that baby. All right. So again, let's begin. 10% uh, of newborns, they do require assistance to, at birth to start breathing. This is usually tactile stimulation. No, we don't do the old days of grab the baby by the foot and slap him on the behind. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Gentle stimulation on the back, rubbing the back, uh, rubbing the sole, flicking the soles of the feet is usually all you need. 1% uh, require extensive resuscitation measures. I would say that that number is probably less than that. Okay, very rarely do you have to go beyond chest compressions when you're doing a neonatal resuscitation, okay? Uh, very rarely do we even go to medications, okay? There usually has to be a weird circumstance. A mom's a heroin addict uh, would be a, probably a good example. If she's on uh, narcotics, that would be it. Uh, and then incidence of the complication increases as the birth weight decreases. So the younger, the, the smaller they are, yeah, the more complications you're going to have, all right? And so look at, and you need to ask mom about that. Ask mom about contributing risk factors, you know? Was there any meconium staining during the birth is something that you got to figure out. Um, and that's kind of one of the big important things we'll talk about. And then always make sure you got your OB kit and make sure everything is in your OB kit. Nobody has torn a hole in the OB kit to get to the scalpel to do a cricothyrotomy because they don't have a, a separate scalpel. And then they didn't replace the OB kit like they should have. And again, now we've got a problem when, when I go to cut the cord, I have nothing to cut the cord with. All right. So make sure that all your stuff is in there, okay? Um, uh, if you're going to have a you know, plan of transport in advance, uh, neonatal intensive care units is your best choice. So if you got a kid that's having problems, um, again, most everybody wants to scoop and run to the closest available place. Um, I think that again, it's you're taking you're taking that little baby to Bubba's ER, and Bubba's ER can't handle it, okay? You need to take them somewhere where they got a NICU. The good news, they got a NICU at, at Advent here. They've got a they've got a NICU at Chan's again. Uh, probably one of the best NICUs in the country is at Chan's. So again, uh, again, follow your local protocols on this though, and definitely consult the doc. And I can pretty much tell you if you're taking them somewhere, the baby somewhere where they're having trouble, and that 
place is not set up for neonates, they're going to say, don't come here. Okay. Um, again, the respiratory system uh, it, it most suddenly initiates and maintains respirations. It's supposed to do that. It's not going to work inside the fetus. Again, if you haven't watched the changes that happen during birth on that video that I sent to you guys earlier about fetal circulation. You need to go back and watch that. Stop this one right now. Go back and watch it. All right. So again, one third of the fetal lung fluid is removed through compression during the vaginal delivery. So the lungs are full of amniotic fluid. So as the mom delivers, it's going to kind of get squished out on its own. Okay. Again, no need to hold a baby upside down. So there's no need to do that. Okay. Simple suctioning works just fine. And again, usually normal conditions, they take the first breath seconds after delivery. Again, it's usually a very traumatic event for the child. It usually stimulates them almost immediately. So again, when you when the baby starts to get a little bit acidotic, that's what actually starts to trigger it. The stretch reflex in the lungs, again, if they become hypoxic and they start getting cold, and that's why they start to take that first breath. So all of these things are normal occurrences as they come out of the womb. Now, um, when they when they First breathe, again, that the lungs are going to fill rapidly with air. It's going to displace all the fetal fluid. And it got to make sure that you get, there's going to be some ongoing hypoxia. A little bit of acrocyanosis, guys, is not bad in these guys. I want you to try to remember that. But you got to make sure that the patient is not having any type of respiratory distress with this. Uh, they are very susceptible to hypoxemia. So, uh, again, but also too much oxygen can cause problems with a neonate. And that's one thing we really got to make sure of. We don't over-oxygenate babies, okay? We can blind them very easily, okay? But at the same time, we need to make sure that we ventilate them and oxygenate them appropriately, okay? Titrating your oxygen is a big thing, okay? Uh, so again, so the infant enters a period of apnea known as primary apnea. This is when they have a, a, a problem inside the birth, okay? Um, and so you stimulate that baby and they should come out of that primary. And then if they can continue to have uh, ongoing uh, asphyxia, again, the, the child will enter a period known as secondary apnea. Uh, again, primary apnea is a little bit more common than you think. And again, simple stimulation usually gets there. Secondary apnea, that's when we're usually going to have to bag the baby and we're going to have to actually, you know, intervene as far as ventilations, okay? They take long, deep gasp when they do that. Uh, they're unresponsive to stimulation. So if you're stimulating a baby and they're not taking those first breaths, grab the bag, okay? Long and short, when you're doing a PD, when you're doing an OB delivery, the pediatric bag should be out, ready to go. Trying to find it when you're in a hurry is a really, and I repeat, really bad idea, okay? Luck favors the prepared. If you pull out the BB, pediatric BBM, I guarantee you, you won't need it. Okay? Uh, remember, unless you start resuscitation after a secondary apnea period, more than likely uh, they're going to die on you. Okay? So if they are coming out and they are apneic, assume that it is secondary apnea. Worst case scenario, you start bagging them, they start crying. It's a great day. Okay? Um, Again, make sure that you treat ventilatory assistance and, if need be, chest compressions. If the heart rate is below 60, we start chest compressions. If we're ventilating a baby and their heart rate is not coming up and it's below 100, we need to start chest compressions. Okay? So, again, below 60 is an absolute. If it's between 60 and 100 and their heart rate is not improving, chest compressions are indicated for a neonate. All right? Uh, again, fetal development usually occurs first semester of pregnancy, and again, the, the, the abnormalities happen then, all right? Um, so we got a lot of congenital abnormalities, and, and again, heart defects is kind of the most common. And what usually happens is, is that, remember in the fetal circulation, how those certain ducts are supposed to close off? Well, unfortunately, sometimes they do not. And so, again, they can, get, they can end up with a, a, a pulmonary stenosis, uh, the atrioventricular uh, ventricular uh, septal defect. Again, blood freely flows through the left and right ventricles. As you can guess, that probably causes a lot of problems. Sometimes this little duct up here does not close like it's supposed to. Uh, so all of these things can happen. Uh, you can get uh, the right ventricle get uh, too much. This is a case of tetralogy to flow, okay? And I guarantee you they love to kind of throw that one on National Registry on you, okay? 
These are our Tets kids or Tet spells, the ones that are by three or four years old. Um, they, they, we, we call them blue kids because, again, they turn blue. And when they get excited, uh, they usually become hypoxic because blood is flowing freely before that. By the way, most of these kids nowadays have this surgically repaired before before uh, before three months of age. Okay, so that so most of the time they will go in and surgically repair these guys. If not, you still have one of the older kids where they do do surge. But, um, they'll turn a little bit blue on you, especially when they get excited. Usually, the knee chest position for the kid. They're sitting down like a catcher, except their knees are right up on their basically on their clavicle. Again, it's one of the things that reduces the pressure and allows, the, again, the, the proper circulation to happen. So, again, uh, some of the congenital abnormalities. Uh, you can have transfer, transposition of the great vessels. The, the vena cava and the aorta kind of, kind of uh, are in the wrong places. Uh, coarction of the aorta, if there be some mitral stenosis, hardening of the mitral valve. Pulmonary stenosis, they, they showed this back here, uh, again, Aortic stenosis, these are hardening of those vessels and narrowing of them, okay? And the hypoplastic left heart syndrome, uh, just a small left heart, okay? The, the right heart, this is an example of aortic stenosis. There's closing of the valve here. Um, again, in the same way with pulmonary stenosis, instead of that valve being small, this would be small, okay? Um, again, uh, some other non-cardiac congenital abnormalities, you can have uh, a diaphragmatic hernia. Uh, that, that is a, a defect in the diaphragm. Uh, Meningomyocele. Uh, these uh, are, again, spinal cord association in the, the actual spinal cord and structures are actually exposed to the outside. Uh, Ophatocele is a, a defect where the basically the guts of the baby are in the umbilical, uh, are in the umbilical cord, okay? Again, go past this, cut the cord, okay? Um, so you can, these are things, by the way, great, great third semester project, by the way, both of these, I would say probably all three of these would be a great third semester project for you. Hint, hint. All right. So uh, non-cardiac abnormalities, again, uh, co-anal astresia is where you get a bony or, or a membrane septum between the nasal cavity and the pharynx, or they have a cleft palate. Um, this is where they have the short jaw kind of uh, split there. And it doesn't completely close during fetal development. Uh, but it's usually in the, uh, the cleft lip is the failure of the upper lip to close. And then there's Pierre Robin syndrome. And uh, Pierre Robin is a, they got a small jaw with a really big tongue. And uh, it's usually in conjunction with a cleft palate. By the way, another really good third semester project is Pierre Robin syndrome. Okay. Uh, these kids look like they have a really big overbite and a really short jaw on the back. Um, so how do we treat these guys, okay? How do we, we assess them? So we immediately at birth, when they come out, uh, you quickly obtain your vital signs. And when we say vital signs with these guys, color, heart rate, respirations are the big ones. How much are they moving? Are they grimacing? Okay, what is their respiratory effort? That's what we're truly after. Guys, the respiratory rate on these guys should be should be 40 to 60 a minute, breathing one time a second. That's normal, okay? And if they're not adequate breathing or they're gasping, you need to immediately start bagging these kids, okay? Normal heart rate is usually between 150 and 180 after a couple minutes after birth, then it might slow down to 130, 140. It should never be below 100, okay? Again, if it's below 100, you need to be thinking bag them uh, to start with. And if it's below 60, we definitely start chest compressions on these kids. Check their color. Pulse oximetry is, is a good indicator, but just remember, they're still learning how to use their lungs, okay? So there, it might be a little bit lower than what you think. Gun for about 95% on that, okay? And uh, again, you want to, don't reach, uh, they don't, until about 10 minutes after birth, you're going to have some low pulse ox readings, okay? Don't let that freak you out. Uh, make sure you get an APGAR score. That's at the one in the five minutes. Uh, again, your appearance, uh, how generally do they appear? The grimace, are they actually making facial expressions moving? Uh, are they moving the arms and legs? Respiratory effort that they actually are trying to breathe, that there are no gasps. Again, they're assigned a, a point scale of 0, 1, and 2. Uh, you can have a 0 on this one. Uh, you can have a 10 on this one, but I can tell you guys, uh, 7 to 10 after the 5-minute one's kind of normal. Uh, four to six, you got some problem, and I would probably oxygenate, stimulate them. 
And then uh, less than four, you probably need to begin a resuscitative effort. All right. So, again, the pri priorities, it, it starts in delivery. Get your stuff out. Get your stuff out. Get it ready to go. Assume the worst is going to happen. You're right. 99% of the time, it's not. That 1% is when you become the hero. Okay? So get this stuff out. Get it ready, all right? Administer supp supplementary oxygen, and those how they're just kind of letting it blow by. This is actually not a bad way to do it. The one thing I would caution about is, is their little eyeballs with oxygen. Again, you can blind a kid, so be judicious about it. Uh, again, make sure you suction uh, the great debate, mouth or nose or nose and mouth. Um, I'm more of a fan of the mouth than nose. Uh, well, they're obligate nose breathers. Yeah, they are, but again, get all the goop out of their mouth because that's probably where it's going to be to start with, okay? Um, does it really make a difference? I honestly don't think so. I've heard experts both ways say why you do it. I like mouth and nose, okay? Either way is fine, all right? Uh, if a meconium present, consider intubating and then suctioning. Um, there's a little bit of change in that philosophy. Um, if the meconium's already gotten in there and they've already taken their first breath. They're going to have to clean out the lung anyway. And usually they say don't intubate these little boys, these little kids. Um, if they have not taken their first breath, we don't want to let them take their first breath. We don't want to stimulate them. We want to suction them first, okay? By the way, more than likely you're going to stimulate them when you go to sticking an ET tube down their little throats. So, again, you got to get this. Meconium is the baby's first poop that happens in utero, okay? Here's my little statement about uh, meconium, and this is my polite way of saying it. It is Velcro on steroids. It likes to stick to everything, okay? Especially brand new, newly developed forming lung tissue, all right? So again, if they don't cry immediately, flick the back of the soles of the feet, rub, gently rub the back. Don't turn them upside down and shake them. Uh, and again, make sure you cover them up, all right? Uh, cover them up, wipe them off, put that towel away, grab another towel, wipe them off again, pull it off. That should do plenty of stimulation for the child. And then wrap them up and make sure you put the head cover on them, okay? There's a reason your OB kit comes with all that stuff, okay? Make sure that you do that. Make sure you put that head cap on them. They lose a lot of heat through their little heads, Okay. Um, again, make sure that you discard the wet towels, gang. Uh, remember, if you leave the wet towels, they cool off quicker. Uh, you want me to prove that, take a bottle of soda or beer, wrap it in a wet paper towel, and then put it in the fridge for 10 minutes. Guarantee you, you'll have an ice cold beverage when it comes out, okay? Now, again, in colder areas, we want to make sure we got well-insulated bottles. Uh, 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 rubber goes, stay, keep everything heated, Okay. Florida, I know that we don't usually have this problem, but we really need to make that back of that truck as hot as possible, okay? I can't stress that one enough. Make it hot back there. Make it super hot. Don't have the air conditioner on full blast, okay? Especially with the baby that's got wet wet towels around them. That's kind of a, a special way to go, cause them to get hypothermic. All right. So, again, immediately after birth, you want to make sure that they're crying and if they and breathing uh, and then you can, you can, if they're not breathing initially and they're still connected, leave them connected to the mothership, okay? You can start your resuscitation as soon as you get them resuscitated, then you can cut the cord, okay? Remember, there's still nutrients going in between. The baby's first breath is what triggers all of those things to shut off. The, the bypass to the liver, the bypass to the lungs. All of that is shut off on baby's first breath. So if they're not breathing yet, again, you can delay the cord clamping. Uh, make sure you don't milk the cord, by the way. Uh, you could cause some major serious problems. And it can, it can lead to a, a maternal fetal transfusion. We don't want to do that. And, of course, if they have hyperbilirubinemia, that's a 50-point Scrabble word. And that, that's an increase in the bilirubin in the blood, and it can cause jaundice. Okay, uh, Kind of a common thing that happens with your newborns, by the way. Put them in the sunlight, they'll be fine. Uh, uh, but they usually put them under a Billy Rubin lamp, which is the long and short, nice way of saying sun, sunlight. Uh, so again, you're going to do the uh, apply the umbilical clamps and you cut the cord between the two camps. We went over this in the OB section. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed me being an ugly woman if you haven't seen that. <laughs> okay, so 
Uh, this is what we're going to do. Uh, this is the standard measurements of where to cut and clamp. Uh, everybody has their own opinion on that. I go 6 and 10 inches. That's me. Um, that's where I kind of like to do it. All right. Uh, let's see here. We're going to hold up at this point because the next slide is going to start the next part. We're going to start that. So I know it's a little bit long, but hey, that's the way it rolls. And, uh, but this is kind of some important stuff. All right, guys. I'll see you on the next one.